Doctor Who has never shied away from shocking cliffhangers and plot twists. Ever since its return in 2005, the show has been keeping fans on the edge of their seats with unforeseen reveals and shocking and sometimes controversial cliffhangers and plot twists. For a show as complex and exciting as Doctor Who, complete with space and time travel, it's not really any surprise that this sci-fi series has mastered the craft of creating twists to maintain intrigue and generate buzz. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with Who Culture here with the 10 biggest new Who plot twists nobody saw coming. Number 10. The 11th Doctor is killed. The sixth season of Doctor Who started off with a bang. Quite literally. In the first 10 minutes of the episode, we see the 11th Doctor killed by a mysterious astronaut figure that has risen from Lake Silencio, Utah. Now, it's fair to say that fans were left quite shocked and confused by this. Because, I mean, there's no way the Doctor can actually die, right? And it's not until a few minutes later that the episode gives us another big twist that the Doctor is back. Except it's a younger version of himself who has no idea who, what or why he was sent an invitation to Utah. River, Amy and Rory spend the remainder of the season keeping his death a secret as they were afraid of what he might do if he found out since it's been said to be a fixed point in time. Now, this twist coming at the beginning of the season meant that fans were left on the edge of their seats for the remainder of the season, wondering how in the hell the Doctor was going to cheat death. Number 9. The War Doctor Now, Doctor Who's 50th anniversary was fast approaching, and there was so much speculation as to who would be returning and who wouldn't be returning. But I don't think anyone expected them to throw a new Doctor into the mix. When the show came back in 2005, it shocked many fans that the Doctor's home planet Gallifrey was gone due to the time war between the Time Lords and the Daleks. And it was even greater shock when we found out that the Doctor was the one who killed all the Time Lords and he is the only one left. Now we all assumed it was the 8th Doctor who fought in the Time War, as when we are introduced to Christopher Eccleston's 9th Doctor he's shown to be seeing his face for the first time, hinting that he was wounded in the war. No one expected there to be another Doctor in between these two. But we were all proved wrong in the closing moments of the season 7 finale The Name of the Doctor when we were introduced to John Hurt as the War Doctor. Number 8. What's Inside the Sphere? Series 2's brilliant two-part finale left fans in a sea of emotions, as no one expected two of the Doctor's greatest foes to go head-to-head -head in one epic battle. Now, before the episode aired, fans knew that the Cybermen were going to be returning, but the return of the Daleks was kept a secret right up until the reveal at the end of Army of Ghosts. As the Cybermen commenced their takeover of the world, there was an an increased interest in what the sphere was that came through with the Cybermen. Scientists at Torchwood Institute couldn't understand how there were no readings coming off of it as it was existing, but all the signs pointed that it shouldn't. The Doctor questions the Cybermen about the sphere, which is when the Cybermen admit they don't know anything about the object, but merely followed it through the void to travel into an alternate universe. The twist came when the sphere decided to open, with four Daleks flying out immediately ready to kill anything that got in their way. Number 7. Amy Pond is a ganger. Now series 6 is full of twists and turns round every single corner, and if you didn't know already, it's my favourite series. So aside from the Doctor being killed at the beginning of the series, and that other big bombshell that's dropped in the middle of the series, but we'll get to that one later, another shocking and quite important revelation is that Amy has been a flesh duplicate the entire time she's been travelling with the Doctor and Rory throughout the beginning half of the series. In reality, Amy was taken to Demon's Run by Madame Kavarian, in order for Kavarian to watch over the pregnant pond and eventually take the child as her own, with the plan of this offspring later killing the Doctor. Now the scene of seeing Amy waking up to find herself heavily pregnant and about to give birth
Earth was truly chilling. But this twist did answer a lot of questions that had emerged during the first half of the series, such as why Amy kept seeing the mysterious woman through the hatch, and why she told the doctor she was pregnant and then said she wasn't and kind of backtracked a little bit, and more importantly why the TARDIS scanner couldn't determine whether she was or was not pregnant. Number 6. Captain Jack Harkness is the face of Bo. The face of Bo they called me. That one line changed everything fans had seen in series 1, 2 and 3. So technically then, we meet Jack Harkness twice in series 1. The face of Bo was first introduced in The End of the World and Captain Jack Harkness was introduced in The Empty Child. Now, originally the face of Bo had a small role, which gradually got somewhat bigger until his death in series 3's Gridlock, when he tells the Doctor his last four words you are not alone. Although the final words were seemingly forgotten by fans until the Professor Yana Master reveal, and many wondered how the face of Bo knew that the Doctor wasn't the last of his kind. So the face of Bo has mentioned that he's lived a long time, and I think at the time, lots of fans just assumed that he'd heard it through the grapevine that there was another Time Lord knocking about. It's not until Captain Jack Harkness innocently states that he was named the face of Bo in the Beauchene Peninsula where he grew up, and then it all seemed to make sense how the face of Bo knew so much about the Doctor and the secret of Professor Yana because Jack had been through all that with the Doctor, so he actually witnessed it firsthand. Number 5. Clara Oswald is a Dalek Clara Oswald was introduced to Doctor Who in a very unique way. Now, During Asylum of the Daleks, we see Oswin Oswald living day-to-day -day life whilst trapped on the Dalek Asylum after crash landing there three years prior. She befriends and communicates with both the Doctor and Rory through the Asylum's communication system, giving the Doctor instructions on how to slow down the Daleks, blow them up if necessary, and where to go to find her. But throughout the episode, the Doctor does seem to keep questioning how she's managed to survive survive for so long, and also where she gets the milk from to make the numerous souffles that she seems to make on a daily basis. Things take a tragic turn when it's revealed that Oswin never escaped from the Daleks, but was turned into one herself. The Doctor explains how the truth was too much for her to handle, and that she created a world inside her head where she escaped and was waiting for someone to come and rescue her. Finally accepting what had happened to her, Oswin still decides to help the Doctor, by wiping all memories from the Daleks regarding the Doctor and helping him and his companions find their way back to the TARDIS. Number 4. Rose Tyler is the Bad Wolf During Series 1, the same two words seem to be following the Ninth Doctor and Rose throughout time and space. Bad wolf. Even the Doctor mentions in Boomtown that those two words have been constant throughout their time together. And although the phrase had no meaning to the Doctor, it still worried him as he found it strange that the same two words kept popping up everywhere they went. And it turns out that it was Rose sending a message to herself this whole time so that she could save the Doctor when the time was right. In the series finale, the Doctor and Rose were forced to face an army of Daleks, including the Emperor Dalek, a battle which overwhelmed the Doctor as he didn't want to become a killer like his enemies were. In a last ditch effort to save the Doctor, Rose looks into the TARDIS's time vortex and possesses the power of the Bad Wolf, allowing her to defeat the entire Dalek fleet, save Jack Harkness, and also create a paradox by interfering with her own past of placing the message everywhere she went. Number 3. Professor Yana is the Master The Master has always been a big part of the Doctor's life, constantly causing chaos whenever he can. So when the show came back in 2005, the showrunners introduced a lot of new monsters and aliens because they wanted to keep it new and fresh. But Who fans always knew that the Doctor's frenemy just had to turn up at some point. The last Doctor Who fan saw of the Master, he had fallen into the Eye of Harmony and was trapped. Now We never knew how he got out, but many fans were happy that the Master was back to cause chaos and distraction in the Doctor's life. Utopia seemed to be a simple episode, showing the last of humanity on their way to the planet Utopia, in the hopes of living a better life. It's not until the kind old man Professor Yana reveals that he has a fob watch that's very similar to that which the Doctor used to turn himself human, that the Penny starts to drop. When Yana recovers his memories from the watch, his true identity is revealed to be the Master, 
A reveal which not only shocked viewers watching, but the Doctor himself, as he believed he was the last of the Time Lords. And it's revealed that the Master has been amongst the Doctor all throughout Series 3, as he claims to be named Harold Saxon, the man who then became Prime Minister of Great Britain. Number 2. River Song revealed to be Amy and Rory's daughter. Since her introduction in Series 4's Silence in the Library, River Song has been a very important part of the Doctor's life. While it was heavily speculated and then later revealed that she was indeed the Doctor's wife, the twist that nobody saw coming is that River Song is also the daughter of Amy and Rory. Now, the mystery of who River Song actually is is probably one of the longest running mysteries in Doctor Who, with fans having to wait three years to find out her her true identity. And if that wasn't enough, River is also turned into a weapon to be used against the Doctor, as it's then later revealed that she is the one inside the astronaut suit who killed the Doctor at the beginning of Series 6. That mind-blowing twist was felt around the world by fans, and many took to the internet to express their thoughts and feelings regarding the twist. Some were happy, some were confused, and some just found the reveal to be annoying. Because I think a lot of people liked the character as a standalone character without having any relation to the companions because it made the Hooniverse seem smaller than it actually is. Now, as you all know, I am a very big fan of River Song and I will defend the character till my dying breath. But everyone is entitled to their own opinions, even if they're wrong. Number 1. Wilfred Mott Knocks Four Times This is the twist that shocked fans to the core. In the series special Planet of the Dead, the Tenth Doctor hears a prophecy that warns him he will die by a man who will knock four times. And many suspected that it was the Master who would be behind this due to the four-beat drumming he constantly hears in his head. But I'll tell you what nobody expected, nobody expected Wilfred Mott to be the man behind the downfall of the Tenth Doctor. In an exceptionally emotional scene, the Doctor briefly believes he escaped the prophecy until he hears four knocks from a now trapped Wilfred in a radioactive booth asking for the Doctor's help to set him free. I think what makes this twist so heartbreaking is that you can't really be angry or blame Wilfred for the death of the Doctor. You know, he just did what he thought was right by saving one of the workers and innocently thinking that the Doctor would be able to get him out. I mean, he even begs the Doctor to leave him in there and save himself, but the Doctor being the Doctor, he can't do that and ultimately chooses to sacrifice himself to save Wilfred. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed something, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there at Who Culture, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.